in a meditation or in a prayer or in a reflection, or maybe you can even go online and see if you can get yourself some seraphonite, a crystal. I'm pretty sure that there are places that you'll be able to find, maybe not a beautiful big piece like this, but maybe a small piece. You want to ask your higher self, what will I experience when I am successful? Now, there are lots of great gurus and self-help personalities and influencers who have said something similar to this, so I'm not the only one. You have to define for yourself what success means to you and looks like to you. And the only person you have to satisfy is yourself, nobody else. And so if success does actually mean that you have more money, I would argue that you don't want money, you want what you think money is going to do for you and or for your loved ones. Now I'll give you the, the next example. Let's just say that if I had enough money from being successful, what would I spend it on? And the truth is, is that I might, for example, buy my mother or father a new car. I might want to be generous in that kind of way. So what kind of personal images would I put into Positive Prime? I would find a photograph from a website of a car that I know that they would love. I don't need to do the Ferrari or the Porsche or the Range Rover or the whatever, right? It doesn't need to be ridiculous. The interesting thing about manifestation and about getting what it is that we want and need in life is that most of us actually, we put it out there with a representation that we can't actually epistemically access. I'll give you an example. I have beliefs inside of me that would contradict my other than consciousness helping me to be successful if I had an image of a Ferrari. I've actually driven in a friend's Ferrari. It was uncomfortable. You feel every single bump. Now that's because they're supposed to be driven on exquisite racetracks, not on bumpy Australian roads. So I have competing what you might refer to as limiting beliefs to the Ferrari. But let's just say it's an average car for a, you know, an average family in Australia. Now that my energy can attach to in a healthy, sensible way, right? That's not to say that you shouldn't dream big and that possibilities are endless and, you know, your potential is quite frankly infinite. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you need to be able to advance in ways that feel natural and organic and supporting of who you really are. Because the truth is, in order for you to be successful enough to have enough money for you to buy somebody else a Ferrari, you would probably have to work so hard. And the truth is, you're not willing to, and you won't work that hard for that long. You won't sacrifice enough for you to actually have more than enough money so that you can actually buy a Ferrari for someone else. And so the crazy thing is, is that we're led to believe in motivational circles that you need to be unreasonable about what it is that you want and need and desire. And that's how you extract more from yourself and you have to get out of your comfort zone. But we're human and we don't like being outside of our comfort zone. And so the images that you upload need to be images that you actually think that one day you could really and truly experience that. Now, you might have a photograph of a holiday you want to go on, whether that's a cruise or it's a destination, like you want to see the pyramids. Go find photographs of the pyramids because the divine will give you the resources, the solutions, the people, the circumstances and everything else you need that will get you to the pyramids. There's also the fact that you're in this physical plane. You are a human on earth. And so you have to do human things as well as being the beneficiary of magic and of divinity, but you still have to do your part so that you can get to the pyramids, right? And most law of attraction or manifestation or motivational speakers kind of won't tell you that truth. I have stayed in resorts that were 
a dream 10 years ago and I never could have imagined how I ever would have been able to justify affording staying in a resort like that, right? But I have since stayed in them. I did have photographs of the destinations in my Positive Prime sessions. Some of you may or may not know, seven or eight years ago, I reached out to Sean Acor, S-H-A-W-N, Acor, A-C-H-O-R, and he had written The Happiness Advantage and he had an outrageously successful TED Talk. And I knew if I showed him Positive Prime, that he would understand what it is that I had created, what I'd invented. And so I flew to Las Vegas and I had a really amazing conversation with him. I then flew to his home in Texas and we ended up, you know, doing a great piece of work that involved Positive Prime sessions inside the Oprah Winfrey Network's Science of Happiness course that Oprah created with Sean. That's a whole nother story. The point is I had uploaded photographs of Sean Acor and Sean Acor and his wife into my Positive Prime session. So the fact is, is I also uploaded a photograph of Richard Branson, Roger Federer. I haven't, I have actually met Richard Branson, bizarrely enough I have. I actually ran into him. He actually owns a little baby island very near to where I live. And he touched down in a helicopter and he was walking to his chauffeur. And this is so unusual for Australia because we don't really do celebrity. Australia is not really, most Australians aren't really interested in the celebrity US style celebrity blah, right? In fact, we kind of shun it. We think it's ridiculous. But I was with my niece and he's a very tall man with very broad shoulders. And I said to Lucy, that's Richard Branson, right? But I would actually like to have a decent conversation with him and do a piece of work with him. I haven't removed him from my Positive Prime sessions. And I'll tell you this year, I'm closer than I was last year. And next year, I'll be even closer. The truth is, is the universe will align or the divine will align me and the resources, the circumstances and the situations when I'm ready, when I've done the work, it will happen. And so I would actually say to you, what does success mean? Does it mean that you get to work with people like Sean Acor? Because that's what it means to me. It means that I actually get to spend my precious time with amazing people who are actually world-class and they're achieving something extraordinary and they're contributing way beyond themselves in a global scene, not just in a local or a state or, a, you know, national. The work is in you feeling the emotions about what success means to you and then finding the visual representation of that.